Ladies and gentlemen, Smith and Smith. They knock on your door, but they don't ring your bell They stand there and chatter with nothing to say They cool off your house and use up your day They make you rude, they make you a grouch They make you miss your nap on the couch I said don't let it get you down Don't let it get you down Don't let it get you down Sin. You try to decide what they're talking about But whatever it is, you can sure do without You picture yourself as a gentle soul You try to be fair to the world as a whole You'd like to be kind to the man with the case But you just slam the door in his face I said, don't let it get you down Down. Good morning. I wonder if I could have a couple of moments of your... Hello? No, I'm sorry, you've got the wrong number. Yeah, it's okay. Bye. <laughs> Time. I just need some information. What are you selling? Selling you something is not my purpose. I just need to ask a few questions, and then I'll be on my way. Is it encyclopedias? I'm not selling anything. Listen, I love my vacuum cleaner. I never read magazines, and I already have a brush for those hard-to-get-at places. I am not selling anything. May I come in? Don't get pushy, Buster. I'm not selling anything either. Madam, I'm a businessman. I have an appointment this morning in the town of Ballinafad. I must have made a wrong turn somewhere, and I, I just stopped here to ask directions. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see, Ballinafad. Okay, you go right up here, up the 12th concession. You turn left, you go about eight miles past where uh, Thompson Farm used to be. Then you take a right down Harper's Line. That'll get you onto 17B North. You just go right along there until you get to, uh, well, there's a big swing in the road past where we had the church picnic last summer. You take the next right, go through, well, there's a lot of detours, and then Balnafat will be straight ahead. You can't miss it. Is it a, a right turn after where the church picnic was? Yes. Now, there'll be some detour signs, but you just go straight ahead. Balna Fat will be right in front of your nose. You really can't miss it. Thank you. Right. After I finish in uh, Ballinafad, I, I have to go to Tilsonburg. I wonder if you could tell me where that is. I don't know. Y you know? I haven't a clue how to get to Tilsonburg. Oh. Okay, thanks anyway. Sorry. Oh, for crying out loud. Would you like to buy a road map? I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Okay, how much are they? Two ninety-five each, or I can sell you the whole kit, including the case, for $75. That sounds good. 
$75. Okay, who do I make it out to? David Brown. Well, David, let me congratulate you on a clever approach to a very tough business. It's not so tough. The public's pretty stupid. Not all of us, David. Wait till he tries to cash the check. It's not all bad, this door to the door. You're saving on gas by not going to the store. Shop at home before it gets dark. You don't have to change and you don't have to park. Take all his products but make him wait. Tell him you'll pay him at a later date. On the 24th, you'll be good as your word. And then, and then move, move on the 23rd. Dearly beloved, dearly missed, deeply in debt, and well endowed. I've heard a lot of talk lately about hard times in this country, and most of it is just common sense. They say we have a sagging dollar and high unemployment. Well, of course we have high unemployment. Who wants to work if you're paid in sagging dollars? They say we have reduced world exports and a declining gross national product. But all we need are a few hustling salesmen and our national product would be as gross as anybody's. <laughs> Another thing I hear, and this one really ticks me off, is that the United States is a better country than ours. Of course it is. They have all our good people. All we've got are the ones who don't have the talent or the brains to leave. And I think we're doing pretty well for a bunch of losers. And do you know why we're doing pretty well? It's a question of overhead. Let me explain. The gross national product, or GNP, of the United States might be $900 billion. But if they spend $901 billion, they've got a problem. In Africa, the GNP of Magabubu might be five spears. But as long as they're only attacked by four tigers, they've got a profit. It's a question of overhead. I know a man who lives in a mansion. He has servants and gardeners, imported cars and a private jet. He makes a million dollars a year. He has to. If he has a $600,000 a year, he's out of business. Unless he can find another job that pays a million. Take a look in the paper, friends. Those jobs are hard to find. I know another man who lives in a basement apartment. He has a few clothes. He rides a bicycle to work. He makes $185 a week, and he puts 50 of that in the bank. And he never has trouble finding a job. He has more security than the millionaire. It's a question of overhead. Can I speak frankly to you for a moment? Many of you scorn the drunks and derelicts that sleep in the park right here in town. I've seen you encouraging your children to write on them with magic markers. <laughs> Show a little respect. These men are financial experts. They've learned to control their spending. They don't have the debts you and I have. They don't beg quarters so they can lease a Buick. They don't beg quarters so they can split to Oahu. They beg quarters for booze. 
Of course it's for booze. That's their only expense. And how much better off would you be if booze was your only expense? And how much more would you drink? How can you blame them? It's a question of overhead. So friends, tonight when you get home, I'd like you to make a list of your expenses and unburden yourself of those amenities you don't really need. And when you realize how much money you're saving by eliminating these expenses, I'd like you to write a check to me to help in my ministry. And as you're writing that check, let me remind you that a great spirit will be looking down upon you with particular attention to the generosity of your gift. Remember the overhead. Amen. I hope I'm not interrupting anything here. How do I look? Same as usual. Oh, that's great, though. What do you got? Oh, the mail. Fred Schultz. Fred Schultz, has what a written great us name. a letter, yes. Where does he live? Gravenhurst, Ontario. Gravenhurst, oh, up in cottage country. Muskoka. Dear cottage. Smith and Smith. Yes? When you're not working, what do you do for fun? Do you have any hobbies? Ah, uh, geez, Fred, I don't know how honestly I can answer this. We oh, do. You like to do lots of things. I do. I have a motorcycle. I have a motorcycle. Which I, I made him promise that if he was, if he survived an accident, he would sell the bike. If I die. If he dies, I don't care about the bike. She buries me on it. <laughs> Those uh, things scare we me. We play racquetball. Yes. That's a big hobby. Play racquetball. Uh, we have an electric train. Uh-huh. Well, the boys. The boys. Our sons have an electric train that mommy and daddy play with. That's right. Yes. And what else? Well, you have, you sail. I sail? <laughs> this is so much uh, fun. <laughs> I know I have hobbies. I know I'm an interesting person. I just came in to think of why. <laughs> no stamps. I have no stamps. No. What? Oh, no stamp collecting. Okay. No. Uh, I collect dust. <laughs> Do you have any hobbies? You well, sew and knit? And yes, I made that lovely wall hanging on the wall, and mm -hmm. I sew, yes. yes. I don't knit. I've no, never don't. knitted in my life. No, you are a knit, but you don't knit. I've forgotten that. <laughs> I can't get both my hands to work together. I crochet. That's just one hand, you see. That's a lot easier. I didn't know that. Yes. Well, thank you, Fred, for your letter. That's our hobbies. And <laughs> In a nutshell, which is a good place for them. Anyone else who has a letter, please write to us, care of your station. That was better. We wish to pay tribute to the applied art of ancient applied matrimony. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> it's time to take a purely speculative, behind-the-scenes look at the married life of famous people. And who's our lucky couple this week, Sugar Plum? <laughs> our lucky couple this week, Mumble Mouse, is Mr. and Mrs. Henry VIII. Mrs. and Mrs. Henry VIII! <laughs> A sibling. His name was Edward. He stopped his quibbling and headed bedward. He'd go and hide there, finally died there. After the funeral, I married his wife. She was a beauty, just ripe for picking. She did her duty and cook fried chicken she made a daughter i could have shot her i only got her to make an heir but that was back when 
when Henry was bold And now he's fat and lazy and old His fun is all behind him, you see Cause now he's stuck with me This one's a winner I found a doozy A royal sinner A regal floozy Attractive pupils, obnoxious scruples, the queen of loopholes, my Anne of Bolin. There's nothing doing, I'm getting rowdy, a storm is brewing, I'm getting cloudy. The hot spell's waning, I'm still complaining. I can't keep raining without a sun. Cool down, Hank, take a lesson from me. And don't take life so seriously. I ignore what's been done and been said. And I don't lose my head. Have a blast, go and let us some feet. Well, I'll give it one more try. <laughs> Morag's wardrobe supplied by Holly's. Hair by David Church Associates. You got the chance, you're making plans to have a holiday. Your bags, check your tags, you'll soon be on your way. You should leave one thing behind to guarantee your peace of mind. Shangri La is what you'll find if you don't take the kids. Don't take the kids. Mm -mm. I said, don't take the kids. Mm -mm. You won't relax, you won't have fun with those little stinkers making you run. Eyes won't sparkle, love won't bloom. With a couple of six-year-olds in the room Take my advice, you'll be glad you did And just don't take the kids I said don't take the kids When you take a tot, a vacation it's not It's just a big mistake You'll be washing his clothes And wiping his nose And fishing him out of the lake He'll make strange, he'll whine and weep And he'll make sure you don't get no sleep And you'll end up screaming up a little creep So just don't take the kids Don't take the kids mm -mm. I said don't take the kids mm -mm. Kids are great, but now and then It's nice to be alone again Not all the time, just once a year The kids will understand, my dear If it wasn't for us, they wouldn't even be here So let's don't take the kids I said don't take the kids No, don't take the kids Underwear Help you, sir? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think I'll have a drink. Yeah, I'll have a drink. Yeah, you have a drink? I think I need a drink. Can I have a drink, please? Drink? Uh, what would you like? Anything? Everything? Rye, rum, gin, vermouth, vodka, brown beauty. How about a glass of scotch? That's so great. Is this your uh, first flight? Uh -huh. Yeah, first flight. So nervous, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this will help. Well, thank you very much. What kind of plane are you taking? DC-10. Why didn't you say so? Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on my way back home. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to 
take the big bird and... <laughs> Where is home? Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, Vancouver. <laughs> Go that way. So stop before you get to the ocean. Well, you know, Vancouver's a nice flight. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. you won't have any yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm only going as far as Calgary. Yeah, I'm gonna stay a few nights there in Calgary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then I'm taking the train right through the mountains. Into Vancouver. Well, listen, sir, I mean, if you're this nervous about flying and you've obviously got the time, why don't you just take the train all the way to Vancouver? Well, <laughs> that's a wizard of an idea. My wife thinks that's what I am doing. She's waiting for me in Vancouver. But this way, I get to spend a few nights in Calgary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I have a girlfriend in Calgary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does make sense. I suppose you think that a married man cheating on his wife is okay. No! Oh, it's not okay. It's fabulous. I wouldn't do it if it was just okay. I sure as be jeepers wouldn't fly to do it, I'll tell you that. You know, you're a real prize. I hope you have a wonderful flight. I got... Listen, um, how do I find the washroom on the airplane? You just wait till you get to your cruising altitude, you know, then you don't have to ask the stewardess or anything. And then you just go right out the door marked emergency. <laughs> Yeah.